Welcome to our review of Smash Up Disney Edition from The Op, who we have to thank for sending us a review copy of this latest edition of the well-known Smash Up line. Smash Up Disney Edition is a new standalone Smash Up game that is also compatible with all previously released Smash Up content. It was designed by Sean Fletcher and Paul Peterson and features original artwork from Rick Hutchinson, Delaney Mammer, and Francisco Rico Torres. This new Smash Up core set was published in 2022 as a joint collaboration between The Op and AEG. This box plays two to four players with games taking anywhere from half an hour to an hour, depending on player familiarity with the game. This Disney version of Smash Up is listed as ages 12 plus, which seems just a tad high to us, though this is in no way a kid's game and has an MSRP of $34.99 US. Now in Disney Smash Up, players select two fan favorite Disney movies, to smash together and team up in an effort to control bases for points. 20 card decks are selected from Frozen, Big Hero 6, Wreck-It Ralph, The Lion King, Mulan, Aladdin, The Nightmare Before Christmas, and Beauty and the Beast. These decks are shuffled together to become your play deck. It's then up to you to figure out the various combos, symmetries, and synchronicities between your play decks, play characters and actions to raise your power on various bases in play, then score points based on your relative power when each base reaches its power level. Now, to get a good look at the contents of this new Smash Up box, check out our Smash Up Disney Edition unboxing video on YouTube. So in this set, you get eight different decks, a number of two-sided counters, which is something new with this version of Smash Up, designed to better track power-ups versus points, new base cards and counters to track the brace break point of your bases and the power levels at each base. There's a plastic insert designed to hold each deck separate from the others with plenty of room to add in other smash up card sets. There are some large plastic dividers, which don't actually work with this insert. These are actually for use with smash up the big geeky and bigger geekier boxes. We like to use these for drafting decks as they include some helpful summary info for each card set's playstyle. Then finally, there is a rather thick rulebook. This rulebook is a testament to how long Smash Up's been around for and how many edge cases have come up over the years. It reads somewhat like a set of card game tournament rules, making sure to get into every single little keyword with various timing rules. While thick, the rules though are very clear and easy to understand. Overall, I was happy with the component quality here and really appreciate some of the new additions like the new base mats and counters and the unambiguous rulebook. Now let's move on to an overview of play. So start with everyone picking their pair of decks to mash together. Now to facilitate this, I recommend using those plastic dividers because they give you an idea of how each deck plays as well as each getting a difficulty rating with some decks being honestly much easier to play than others. We prefer to use the who's on your side drafting system presented in the rules where one player picks a faction, then each other player around the table picks one faction. The last player then picks a second faction and things wrap back around the table so that the first player picks their second faction last. Now, once everyone has their cards, they should pull out the two blue backed bases from their decks, then shuffle the two decks together thoroughly into a single play deck. All the base cards from all the players are then combined and shuffled as well. A number of base mats are put out equal to the player count plus one, and random bases from the decks chosen are placed on each of these. Tokens are placed on the mat at the break point of the card and at the zero point for power. Everyone draws five cards and can take a mulligan if they have no characters in their starting hand. The start player begins the game, which will continue around the table clockwise until someone has at least 15 points at the end of their game. At that point, if two or more players tie for points, everyone plays an additional turn until someone has the most points and is declared the winner. Each turn in Smash Up Disney Edition, you can play one character card from your hand to a base and or play one action card in any order. As each card is played, you will activate the effects on the card and follow through any effect chains created by that card. Now, all characters have a power rating. The current power token for the base should be adjusted after each character is played at a base. 
If that token meets or passes the breakpoint token, that base will score at the end of the active player's turn. Now, most characters also have special abilities. These can go off when the card is played. They could be a talent that can be activated every turn. It could be an ongoing ability that stays in play as long as the card's in play. It could be a combination of all of these with an effect going off when you play it and then having a talent you could use later. It's certainly not worth getting into the details here, but these kind of abilities do all sorts of things like add power to this character or another, allow you to play out additional character cards or action cards, manage your hand, discard, draw additional cards, and many other effects. Now, action cards come in a variety of types as well, and similar to characters, all do something different. They could add or take away power from cards in play. They could adjust the breakpoint of bases. They could have players draw or discard cards. They can let you pull specific cards from your deck. They can mess with your discard pile and more. Now, most action cards are one and done. You play them, carry out their effect, and then discard them. But there are also base and character modifier cards. These are played on existing cards in play and stay in play until the card they are attached to is removed from play. Now, in addition to this, each base also has its own set of rules on it, which can also include an assortment of things like letting you move characters to or from that base, letting you return characters to the base after it scores, or sorry, from the base after it scores, increasing the power of the cards played at that base, allowing you to play additional cards and more. There are a ton of different card effects in this game between the base, character, and action cards, and it's those abilities and the way they interact that makes Smash Up what it is and this Disney edition is no exception. Now, at the end of a player's turn, if any bases have hit their breakpoint, they score. We like to call this the base pops when this happens. Each base card lists point values, three point values, and these are awarded to the players with the most, second most, and third most power at the location when it pops, with detailed rules for ties included in the rules. Note that a number of action, character, and base card abilities can trigger just before or after a base pops. Now, after a base scores, all cards are returned to their owners, discarded, and a new base is drawn from the deck. The two base tracking tokens are reset, and the next base that popped this turn is scored, if there are any more. The active player then draws two cards from their deck. While it is not stated in the Smash Up Disney Edition rulebook, it is a standard rule in all Smash Up games that at this point, if the active player has more than 10 cards in their hand, they must discard down to 10. It has been confirmed with the designers that this rule is meant to be in place for this edition, but was missed in the rulebook. Yeah, I thought it was worth mentioning during this review in case you weren't aware. Now, once all bases are scored, you check to see if the game ends. Remember, a player needs to have 15 or more points for this to happen, or if the game continues to the next player. For the most part, these rules are identical to the rules for every other edition of Smash Up, and the cards here are totally compatible with all previous and future sets. A significant change here, though, is that the cards you play on bases are called characters and not minions. And when combining this set with most other, uh, all minions are characters and all characters are minions. Also, in an effort to be more clear, they replace the word transfer with move when referring to moving cards or relocating characters minions. Also, the power tokens and base mats are actually totally new with this core set. Now that you have a rough idea of how Smash Up Edition plays, Disney Edition plays, let's move on to our thoughts. So I have to admit, I haven't played Smash Up in a very long time. I played it back when it was the new hotness, and I did have some fun with it. Now, I played a few more times with other people's copies over the years, and I'm sure some of those plays included expansions. So when I got the offer to review Smash Up Disney Edition, I took it as a chance to see how the game has evolved and give it another try. Now, one thing I expected from this new edition was for it to be a lighter, more entry-level game due to having the Disney license. I was expecting something more like my first Smash Up, the kind of game that they sell at mass market stores, hoping to lure in a new demographic to the full game. Boy, was that wrong. That's not at all what Smash Up Disney Edition is. This is a full, complete version of Smash Up with all of the rules, complexity, and card variety that this series of games has to offer. Now, this is going to be a great thing for long-time Smash Up fans looking to add new, compatible content to their games. But I don't know if this particular game has the broad appeal I expect from games with the Disney name. 
Though, based on other games we've reviewed recently, like Disney Sidekicks, maybe it's me who has to change my expectation of what to expect from a Disney game. It's no longer the case that when you see that Disney logo, you're going to find a children's product in there. In large part, I think, because of their wide growth through acquisitions, they are simply trying to be more than a single thing, suitable for a wider group. So the big thing with all versions of Smash Up, including this Disney edition, is that the game is all about learning and knowing the cards. Not only the cards in the decks you're playing, but the cards your opponent's decks as well. This is a game, like many collectible or living card games, where learning to play well pretty much means turning the game into a lifestyle. To learn all the nuances, you have to play often with different people, trying different decks and combinations. You may even want to spend time between plays, looking through the decks, trying out sample lands and draws, playing against yourself or more, just to better learn the ins and outs of the various options and cards included in Smash Up. I can totally see taking a deck or two and sitting down, going through them to think about the interactions and combos over a nice cup of coffee. Now, all of this can easily become overwhelming. Anytime I played this Disney version of Smash Up with someone who hasn't played Smash Up before, they start off the game rather lost. Even experienced card game players who haven't played Smash Up before aren't sure exactly what to do with all the information they're presented with. There is a lot going on in this game and a lot to try to remember on each turn. With four players, you need to remember what all five bases in play do, how they interact with the cards in your hand. Depending on the deck you're playing, you may also need to watch what cards are you're discarding as much as what you have left in your hand. All decks benefit from you knowing what's in your deck, including how many copies of each card. And all of that is without even considering what your opponents have going on. Due to the amount of information you need to process while playing this game, it is not going to be for everyone. Now, on the other side of the coin, though, long-time Smash Up fans I played Smash Up Disney Edition with love it. They love the new combos. They love having more options, and they appreciate the fact this isn't a simplified version of the game. The eight new decks here are all very valid options combined with their own or paired with earlier sets. These people thrive on having more cards to learn and more interactions to figure out. If you love the exploring and learning, memorizing, developing new plays, there is certainly a lot here to work with. Now, speaking of combining this set with previous mashup sets, I do appreciate that this box is fully compatible, though I don't think they would have released it otherwise because playing out a smashup game that doesn't work would have been torpedoing themselves, I think, in that case. Now, what I do find it a bit odd, they changed the name from minion to character, but I think that could be a licensing thing because of Disney, because they probably can't use the name Minion due to Universal Studios. So this is just a minor annoyance, but it can confuse some players who aren't used to it. Similarly, the Marvel edition, also a Disney property, made the same change for possibly that same reason. I also appreciate the new bits that Disney edition of Smash Up brings to the game in the form of the two-sided counters. Um, instead of just having one set of counters that you use to track upgrades and victory points, you now have uh, counters with pluses on the one side, so they're clearly bonuses. The new base mats are fantastic with their tracking tokens. Now, I will admit there are some hardcore Smash Up fans that think it should be up to the players, playing to keep track of what power level every base is at and who's winning. But this information has always been public, and you just have to take the time to do the math. And I would rather players were rewarded for their skill in playing the right cards at the right time and figuring out combos rather than their observation and quick math skills. I agree. And frankly, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed playing it without that, or at least until I'd managed to learn the reflex of looking at each base and mentally tallying the cards, tokens, modifiers, etc. Now, one th uh, note, though, is that these are just small tokens lying there and can be very easily knocked. So it's still worth checking your math pretty regularly. Plus, just with all the different interactions, rechecking the totals at bases is probably just something you should do every now and then, regardless. Definitely after it pops, make sure you do a recount to confirm that the pop did happen. Now, another bonus of this new edition is the comprehensive detailed rule book that is much more thorough than the original. And I'm sure this just comes with the game's age, with multiple expansions and core sets coming out, and various tournaments and organized play events and other feedback coming from players of the game. 
every time I had a timing issue or didn't quite get how a card worked or we had a question like, can I play that here? Or what happens when this happens? We were able to find an answer right in the rule book. It's been a long time since I played a game. I didn't have to Google anything. And I do appreciate that. Absolutely. But of course, that detail comes at the expense of size. And they didn't include an index, as I expect it would be far too difficult, considering the sheer amount of text on each page. Now, one final thing I do want to talk about before we finish up is the game length of Smash Up Disney Edition. So first off, this game is significantly longer at the max player count. Now, this is due not only to the fact you have more players taking turns, that's obviously going to have an impact, but also the fact there are just more bases in play. So there's more things to read and remember and that can interact with each other, which can lead to even more AP or analysis paralysis. And overall, this AP can be a huge issue when playing with players just learning the game and even experienced players that can come up. Now, I'm going to call out in particular my oldest daughter, who is a very tactical player. When she plays any board game, she likes to think out every possible action and weigh them against each other before making a move. Well, this Disney version of Smash Up proved to be a bit too much for her. There was just too much to consider and think about where she didn't want to make the wrong move and her turns became excessively long. And I've got to say, I can tell from the rules, this has been a problem for other people. Because even the book recommends, hey, just play a card and see what happens when learning the game. The problem is convincing a competitor player to actually do that. One helpful feature is the Roy in the Rulebook. It has some great suggestions for starting smash ups that can help introduce mm -hmm. people to the game. Now, it won't help with the AP, but it can at least make your decks work together more naturally before you have to start worrying about some of the more obscure and creative interactions. Very true. Now, a surprise for me regarding player count is how well it played with only two players. Um, the reason I say this is area majority style games don't tend to work well with anything less than three players. There's very few area majority games I found I enjoy with two, but somehow Smash Up manages to make it work rather well. While I still say I prefer it with at least three, I can totally see playing this two player. And I got to say the two player games are at least much shorter than playing with more. We did, however, notice that it was possible in two player to get to a point where even before a player reached 15, they had essentially won the game where any base that popped would give the player in the lead more than 15 uh, points. Yeah, there's a, there's edge cases there where perhaps the other player could score a base without any of the active player being there. That's a hard one to pull off. I think that's, that, that takes a master player to be able to get out of that. Yeah. So what I do recommend is if you do get to that point, probably end the game and play another round at that point. So overall, I was impressed by Disney's Smash Up, or I should say the full name is technically Smash Up Disney Edition, even if it wasn't quite what I was expecting. I really thought I was getting a lighter version of Smash Up with a Disney theme, and I agreed to review this thinking, I'm going to play this with my kids and see if they dig it. They really like, um, they like board games, but they really like Disney and the Disney licenses, and I thought a nice light Smash Up would be fun for them. And instead, I got a, a fully functional, just as detailed and complex as past sets version of Smash Up. Uh, this new version includes some useful upgrades and has proven to be popular with Smash Up fans. But it just wasn't what I was expecting. This game can be overwhelming for new players, and that alone is going to turn people off. Though people willing to stick with the game and learn the various cards and their combos will be rewarded with a very replayable tactical and strategic card game. People who enjoy that tactical play, combined with a small dose of luck, uh, will likely be drawn to this. But make sure you already have other people interested in mind. This isn't going to be a game people learn to love in time. They're either going to like it or not. Now, if you're a Smash Up fan, don't let the Disney theme scare you away if it might. This is a complete new smash up box set with eight new factions for the game you love factions that work great together and combo well with the sets you already have as an added bonus you get some improved tokens and in my opinion a better way to track base power levels though of course if you hate them you can just as easily leave the bases in the box and play old school or start with them in to learn and then remove them once everyone is up to speed now, if you enjoy area majority games, I think Smash Up's a neat one worth checking out. 
Instead of a map and cubes or minis, you're battling over card locations with character cards and power-ups, which your group might really enjoy. This new Disney edition is a good place to smart start a smash-up journey. Now, familiar characters that actually match deck theme to their characters rather well make this actually rather thematic. If you can ever step back and not spend all your time trying to figure out how to hit that next giant combo. Now, a group that may not have tried Smash Up in the past, but that should, are competitive card game players. Smash Up Disney Edition provides all of that deck mastery, combo, finding, synchronicity, discovery you love without the cost of having to keep up with the latest releases and an evolving meta. Similarly, if you've become addicted to Marvel Snap on mobile, <laughs> while not the same, there are a lot of similarities you may enjoy, and the game will feel somewhat familiar to you. Yeah, I had the opposite. Coming as someone who is experienced with Smash Up, I found Snap to be a very quick playing, simplified version of Smash Up. Now, if you tried Smash Up in the past and weren't impressed or didn't enjoy it, I don't think this new edition does anything different enough to win you over. Unless, of course, you're a huge Disney fan and the Disney license will make you overlook any problems you had. Or if your main complaint was tracking the map, because the new mats do make that much easier as long as everyone will use it. So if your main complaint was tracking that math, you may want to give this a shot. Even if some players choose not to use them, it is a great advantage uh, as a tool for onboarding players and helping them learn the game. Now, for anyone else, this is very much a try before you're by. And if possible, I recommend trying twice with the same set of cards, the same smashed up deck. There is just far too much going on in this game to really grasp it with one play. Personally, I'm glad to have this in my collection, but it doesn't have me rushing out to pick up more Smash Up sets and expansions to add to it. Though I will say, if more Disney sets are released, I will be tempted to pick those up. Well, that's it for our review of Smash Up Disney Edition, a complete new Smash Up core set fully compatible with everything that has come before. And while a good entry point to the series, not a simplified My First Smash Up as we'd been expecting. Now, before I go, I do want to invite you to check out my written review of this Disney version of Smash Up over at the blog, tabletopbellhop.com. 